Antietam here at Antietam National Battlefield. Just checked in with our with our contacts. Maybe at the nice new visitor center over there. Just opened two weeks ago. Really cool, really cool entrance. Still waiting on kind of the landscaping to do its thing. But uh, it's closing time for them and uh, just getting set up time for us so that we're ready for our presentations tomorrow morning. Man, it's so good to be back here. So good to be back here. It's unreal. Dunker Church over there. There's a New York monument sticking out of my head. It's my, my favorite battlefield. Antietam is my favorite battlefield. And how cool is it that we get to talk about the birth of photojournalism? <laughs> here it comes, here comes the rain. Even though it's sunny out, weird, huh? Weird how that works. Oh uh, yeah, let me get the, let me get the, this thing out of here. Sorry, time lapse, she'll just have to, Pick back up another day. Yes, I knew the pocket should remain upright for best optimal consideration, condition, whatever. Close this stuff up. Here it comes. Totally not a concern that our tent is going to get wet. We figured it would anyway. Yeah, close, close that up. Let's go sit in the car. Bugs. Well, we are finally set up, mostly, mostly set up. Everything else will go in once the, once the sun goes down, it starts cooling down. Hopefully these bugs, they're mostly clearing out. Christine's relaxing. Got a lot of our, a lot of our, our gadgets and stuff out, but uh, <laughs> I'm excited. I gotta say I'm excited to be back here next to the visitor center. And I think we mentioned it before, but the visitor center opened two weeks ago. It's uh, kind of a soft opening. I just talked to one of our um, one of our uh, park police friends, and they said that uh, it's officially still a soft opening. I think the eighth of September, which is September. Is it a Friday? Is that a Friday? Tomorrow's the big day. Yeah, can't wait. I have to figure out uh, dinner tonight still. And yeah, all right, it's night time, dinner time. Ooh, hot roast beef sandwich. What'd you get? I, that one. I got a cheeseburger and fries, cheeseburger gravy and fries. gravy fries. Awesome, as you can see, sun is down. What a beautiful night! Gonna be a good night. Can't wait for tomorrow. It's time to go to bed. It um, we let it cool down a little bit. You know, it still is August, so it was it was really warm today and humid. We had the rainstorm come through, but uh, I think uh, I think weather is supposed to be good the next two days, and it's good that we're you know we're not sleeping in a we're not sleeping in the micro camper. What a good night. Good night of sleeping. Once we got to around 10, 30, 11 o'clock, the tent was cool enough that that we can actually kind of do our thing. By the way, you're working double duty as a video camera, YouTube audience, and awesome mustache waxer checker people. So let me know when I got it. But 
morning came way too quick. Got up around <laughs> around nine. But you know the visitor center doesn't open until when does the visitor center open? I don't nine, know where the visitor okay. center is. Is it nine? Okay, well we we were up. We were up, we got everything out. You always kind of fight a losing battle between you kind of want to sleep in a little bit because when you're when you're somewhere different, especially video, especially reenacting outside, sleeping outside, you don't really get the greatest sleep. So it's kind of a mix between how much sleep can I get versus how hot is the tent going to be when I'm getting all dressed up. So it's kind of a weird thing. So far, there's a ton of people here. It's going to be a hot day, hot, hot, hot day here in August. Thankfully, we have our we have our rain fly acting as shade because it's going to be probably mid to high 90s today. Got a breeze, thankfully, which is keeping us cool. The dark box behind me is set up. The cameras are out. The display pieces are out. So, but real soon, we're going to have a lot of people for our demonstration and that should be good. There's Christine's dry plate camera. It's more of a kind of more of a backup. We also shoot that a lot with uh, with our steampunk stuff. And then uh, there's our EH and T Anthony stereo camera with Scoville stereo lenses. Really cool. Dark box in the back. Some example stuff. Yes, the National Park Service, it's my pleasure to welcome you. My name's Olivia, I'm one of the rangers here, and we have assisting us today in presenting our programs, John and Christine Milliker. They're park volunteers, great friends of the park, and they're going to demonstrate the process of wet plate photography for you today. That's the same process that Alexander Gardner would have used to make his iconic images of Antietam, some of the first images where Civil War dead had been, or war dead in general, had been photographed before they were buried. This is part of our photography weekend here. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. Oh. All right. Cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Good, good subject matter. That, wow. Garrett. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Garrett. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. That presentation. I'll get that mug out. Yeah, put it in there. Yeah, it makes it. Oh, <laughs> framing. Oh yeah. Terrible. Anyway, that was a good. Uh, that was our second presentation. I don't know why I did that. It's second presentation. Uh, another great crowd. Not as big as the first, but uh, a lot of good questions. I got, I got, I got through quick. I got through quick, and I'm like, Christine, how am I doing all the time? It's like you've only used seven minutes of your twenty. And I'm like, oh, geez, I just talked, I just went through everything, but I always have plenty. I always have plenty left in the tank to bore people with. But uh, another great, uh, another great crowd. We're done for the day, but we've had still a lot of a lot of people just walking by, and uh, just chatting. People that have been, they're they're in now with Bob Zeller with his stereo and three three D presentation i went in and talked to bob real quick and and said hi to him and hoping i get a chance to see his presentation tomorrow but we have so many people that kind of strag you know kind of stragglers even though i recommend hey you want to go in there and see that but uh, we still have stragglers and christine's got a bunch of bunch of cyanotypes out in the sun for the kids they went in and uh, we told them to come back out and we'll we'll pull them from the sun and and let them you know rinse them off and de develop the cyanotypes but um, we're done for the day, uh, so we'll we'll stay we'll stay dressed weird for uh, until the park officially closes. Uh, at least the visitor center officially closes. The park closes at dusk, I think, and uh, get some get some dinner here pretty soon. Got a couple cyanotypes hanging out in the sun over here. There they are. We make digital negatives and you know, you got to put emulsion to emulsion. So if, if the kids didn't completely coat the cyanotypes, if we're doing that kind of event, Christine's got a bunch of them, uh, a bunch of them ready to go. That way it makes it easy for the kids. But 
sometimes we uh, the, the digital negatives can get destroyed by accident, of course. And so what I tried was I tried encapsulating those digital negatives in lamination sheets and acrylic, uh, you know, the reason we use glass for our contact frames is because if you use acrylic, it just zaps, it, it blocks a lot of UV light. So it takes a lot longer. So I think that's what we're getting with the lamination sheets. And um, I may just need to, you know, budget in the fact that we're going to need to print a bunch of digital negatives and just accept the fact that, you know, a, a handful of them are going to get destroyed. Turn it up, turn it right side up. Now turn it around. Turn it over. Now that it's in the water, you can turn it over. Yeah, now keep swishing it. Keep swishing it. Nice shots, guys. Oh. This is peroxide. All it does is make it oxidize faster. It would have done that when it dried anyway. Well, today's done. We finished dinner. Had some cheese steaks. Yeah. Cheese steaks from the local market. Really good. And now we're just kind of hanging out with the New York Monument, kind of a thing that we do every year, don't we? Yeah. Kind of sit out on the New York Monument and the park is officially open until dusk, which I think is- About now. About now. There's the sun over there. Well, what was left of it. And so we kind of just have a sit, have a, have a soda pop and kind of unwind big day big wonderful day today and i hope we get the same tomorrow a lot of a lot of cyanotypes a lot of people and uh just just seeing people connect that idea of how cyanotypes and photography works just get that uh, that aha moment moon is over there, not quite full, but not half anymore. It's starting to get a little chilly, so it's definitely going to be a good night's sleep tonight. May need the blanket. We have only one more day. Good news is we'll be back next month. Good news is we'll be back next month. And uh, we've heard that the photography weekend has gone so well that it just very well may be back next year, which is great. Yeah, we're so proud to be able to tell part of that story. It's really cool. Mm. So, with that, see you tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Well, Sunday morning, slept okay, a little sore. Cots get old after two minutes, two days, two days. But it's Sunday morning. Hopefully, we get a lot of the uh, same amount of people we had yesterday, maybe hopefully more. But uh, but we're all set up. Sad that this is the last day. There are some, uh, some rain threats, but it's about 50%, so coin flip. And we'll figure it out. But uh, we have demonstrations today at 10.30 and 1.30 again. Yeah. Hopefully we don't take home wet canvas, but we'll, but we'll see. Skies look good. Actually got a little chilly last night, which is perfect. Yeah, so we'll see what happens. Thank you, Olivia. Thank you, Antietam National Battlefield. 
for having us out here one more time. We are so blessed and honored to be able to help teach the story of photography on a location where we think photojournalism started. I want to teach you a little bit about where photography came from, how we got here, and all the, the difficulty that the photographers that came here and to all the other battles, what they went through. Christine's blowing minds. Uh, that's so cool. It's so cool when you see kids just get it. Sorry. Just understand. Wait a minute. That was a that picture was that picture was somewhere else. That picture was in the negative. And uh, and now I have a copy of that. It's really cool. It's just that the darkening of the silver is oh. silver. It's elemental silver. And so on a on a dark plate, it will appear like a positive. This is the magic. Wow. You look much better after that. Do you have any idea why it's upside down and backwards? Christine loves showing off the camera. Letting people take a look at the back of the camera, asking them, in a line. what do you see? So Which the answer is, like I guess I shouldn't tell you the answer, but the answer is upside down and backwards just because that's how the physics of light works. But here in some of the questions or some of the answers as to what's wrong with the photo is really cool. We get, it's in color a lot, which is it's kind of funny, but not, you know, it makes sense. It's in color, but they just don't realize that the emulsion of the tin type plate is what uh, records or doesn't record color. Oh. There we go. Well, our last demonstration just finished up and, uh, what good crowds this weekend. Oh, got a little light leak. There we go. Uh, to help tell that story, especially with great people like Bob Zeller with his 3D and uh, stereo presentation and uh, Ranger Ranger Snyder with uh, just, just going on a, on a nice hike. It wasn't a strenuous hike. Christine's out actually out there now. But a nice hike taking you to some of the spots where the, pho the photographers actually um, made some of those amazing images. So, yeah, it's really good. So now it's time to clean everything up. And uh, we're here for another maybe hour or two, three. And then we're going to clean up. Thankfully, it didn't rain, although there's still a, there's still a threat. But thankfully, it didn't rain. And uh, we should be taking home wet canvas. So, yeah, we'll see. It's hard to believe all that fits in a Honda Pilot, huh? Well, everything's all packed up and we're ready to go. Just one last thing to do, just kind of kind of police our spot, make sure we didn't leave anything. We're looking for uh we're looking for stakes, make sure we didn't leave any stakes because I'm sure the groundskeepers here at Antietam would not be happy with that. Of course, no trash. Anything that you know, we want to leave it better than we found it. And I think we did, you know, about 6.30, started packing up around five. That's when, you know, everything kind of closes. Uh, Battlefield itself stays open until dusk, I believe. So, you know, if you ever get a chance to come out here and just enjoy here at, at Antietam National Battlefield, bring a picnic lunch or something and and just be here because it's, it's so amazing here. But, uh, with that said, uh, I think we're ready. We're gonna make the long trek home. Uh, another great weekend at Antietam. A big, big thank you to everyone who came out and visited us. So listen to our, listen to me babble on with a presentation on photography. We didn't get much into Matthew Brady or Alexander Gardner, but that's something that we're going to touch on. We touch on next month for the uh, aftermath weekend. That's the weekend after the, uh, the anniversary of the battle, which is the 17th. I think that's a Saturday. So what are we talking? 24th, 25th of September, I think. Keep an eye on our Facebook page to see if you want to come out and see us. Uh, a big thank you to, of course, Antietam National Battlefield. 
it is a blessing and an honor. I need to go back through emails because if this is not our 10th year here, we're close or maybe 11th. I don't know. We've been here for so long and it's just an honor and a blessing to be here. Thanks to our good friends, Olivia and Keith, you know who you are for uh, making it so easy for us to come out here and, uh, and just love it here. We have such great people. Everybody comes out here is interested in history. So it's real easy to talk to them. We've had several people come out with photography questions. I saw you're going to be there. We had a couple questions. Uh, one gentleman brought some uh, glass negatives that he wants uh, that he wants printed for him, and uh, wow, tired, hungry, ready for a shower, but uh, of course I'm going to be sad. We're going to be sad leaving. Even though we're going to be here next month, we're going to be sad leaving like we always are, and we we can't wait to see it. So any of you that we see next month, we'll see you next month. And for all the rest of you, we'll see you in next video. Have a great night and goodbye.